Hello everybody, this is Kaz from the Pixelation Forums and this is a tutorial on uh, shading. The, the reason why I did this tutorial is that I still see a lot of people on the forums asking whether something or not is pixel, uh, I mean pillow shaded, what is the best way to shade something and basically just not having a basic understanding of how uh, light bounces off surfaces and why uh, is a certain object shaded in a certain way. Now, what I've prepared for you is a series of uh, examples here that try to demonstrate basically how light affects an object. And this right here is a simple floating sphere, uh, basically a, a very bright gray or, or just white. And the light source is uh, above uh, and a bit in front of it. So it's sort of between the viewer and the object, but a bit above, as you can see by the, the little, the little uh, highlight around this area right here and as you can see by the shadow that the light is perfectly vertical because the, the shadow is aligned vertical with the object and the shadow is basically on the opposite direction of the light if the light was around this area right here the shadow would be on this side you also have sort of you have the, the highlight right there you have a sort of a coarse shadow that's where uh, light stops bouncing off the surface into your eye and this is a sort of a bounced light the light that reflects from the ground and hits the object again now uh, what I can show you is, uh, you know, the sphere is around this place, and this would be the surface, you know, of the sphere, and this would be your your eye. Well, not particularly your eye, but you know, the the the, the viewer's eye, uh, where it stands looking at the object. And please pretend that this is a representation, and this is uh, a side view, you know. So what you're seeing in this area right here is what you'll be represent what I'll be representing on this area right here. So this is the light bouncing off the, the object. You have the blues. Uh, what, what I uh, illustrated as blue would be the rays that bounce off but never really go into the, into the viewer's eyes. And you have the ones that, as it gradually turns to be more red, it bounces more into the viewer's eyes because the lights, when they hit the surface, they bounce off based on the tangent. And if you see when you do a tangent, sort of a the, the, the normal vector out of a surface, if your direction hits, uh, your light direction hits in a certain direction, it goes off in the same angle, only mirrored, uh, into, uh, in, well, basically out of the surface. And some of the rays hit your eyes, and that's where we represented the brighter shades around here. And there's a certain point where they hit and then bounce off down, and there are areas where they really never get to hit. Then off the ground, there's a lot of light bouncing off, especially if the environment is bright, and you will see that in an in example in a, in a, in a minute. Uh, they bounce off back to the object, lighting the other areas that you didn't previously have lit by, directly by the, the light source. So this is an example of basically three types of materials or three types of, uh, of surface finishes. And you have sort of a plastic look, which is similar to what we what I showed you previously. Um, and you have then you have a very dull sort of clothy feel to uh, this object, which is has really no highlight because the the surface isn't really polished. There's really not that much bounced light, and then you have a very crisp, uh, polished, uh, varnished even uh, surface, like a marble or something, where you can clearly see. A very defined reflection of the of the light source, and you can even see the reflection of the the shadow on the ground. Now, obviously, these objects they look this way because they're on a very bright background. But if we had a, a very dark background, this would actually look bad because there isn't really a bright area to be bouncing off the object. So you would have to take away the bounce light for stuff to look more natural in the environment, for they to know, uh, look like they really belong in the the environment that we're portraying them in. Uh, another thing that you might want to might want to care about is how defined your shadows are when you're representing a 3D object, because the closer they are to the reflection surface or the, well, the shadow projection sh uh, surface, like the floor or a wall, the the more defined the shadow is, and uh, the closer to the object's uh, size it actually is. Now, what I've represented here to you may seem strange, because sometimes when you pull away from a light, your shadow actually gets bigger. But that depends on how big is your light source, because if your light source is bigger than you, uh, as you get towards the light source, it actually your shadow actually gets smaller because there's more area of light source to actually light you. Uh, and there's a sort of a representation of that. 
as you can see, it, the distance between this ray and this one is exactly the same between this ray and this one. But as you can see on the floor, these two are further apart than this one right here. So what happens is that this area of light uh, have more way to mess around. They, they have more space to just basically mess around, uh, while this ones are very little space to project on the ground. So very uh, uh, a lot of this area is occluded by the, the sphere itself, while uh, this one being so close, there's a very high percentage that can still light around this, the shadow, making it very blurry, uh, very faded. Uh, so to speak. So really, there's, there's, it's very hard for, uh, for the light source to actually make a very defined shadow when the object is far away from the projection surface. Um, another thing that you might want to, you know, consider is how light is bounced off uh, a surface. And this is a more complex shape that I've uh, illustrated. Uh, as you can see, the shadow close to the object is is stronger, because basically that's a very uh, sort of a, a, a deep area. There's a, a very hard for light to get there because there's always something in the way, either it's the ground or the object, uh, light bounces off and uh, there's more chance of it hitting further away from the object because the shadow that it projects is, is uh, it's just blurrier like you can see and it is, as it gets closer to the object is more sharp because the object gets closer to the surface itself. So this area right here, it's very high up. It, it shows up here very blurry. As you can see, the light source, the source is coming from the, from the right, from the top right. It lights this area right here. And as far as I can, I, I'm hoping that you can read the surface itself by only by the shading that I gave it, you know, without having to draw sort of a wire frame over it so you can recognize this as a 3D shape. Um, and you can see that there's bounced light coming off. It usually bounced light comes off, uh, especially where the points, it wouldn't come off as good as here well, the, as much in this spot as it does in this one, because this one has loads more uh, white area around for light to bounce off from. Where right in here, it's very hard, and that's why the shadow right here is also very dark. Uh, another view would be the light from coming from the uh, from the left on the same sort of uh, example, and you can see that this area now is the brightest, and it goes darker and darker to the corner of the object itself as it uh, as it just fades off. Uh, this shadow right here is from the the top. You know, this this sort of this fender around here, uh, and it gets very blurry as it goes away from the object, um, and basically have loads more bounced light this side because there's really no shadow on the floor, and the floor bounces off loads of light into the surface. And um, another example would be a straight top-down light, and uh, you can see that the shadow fits mostly into the space of the object itself. There really is no no flying away of the shadow uh, to any of the sides. And the top, the bottom has some bounce light, not all that much, because uh, there's shadow on the ground to cover it up. And the top is the most lit part, as you can see. Uh, basically, this is sort of a preview of uh, part one of a tutorial that I'll do, uh, a part two, which is the the pixel-based shading of a 3D object, like for example a, a human head, that I will. Uh, later on shade it and display it as a tutorial so you can see uh, any, all of these techniques being appeared, uh, I mean applied to a 3D uh, object. And I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, please leave comments on the, on the thread. If you have any questions, leave it there. I will try my best to answer to uh, all of them. Take care. Uh, stay well.